Hi guys, I'm Ivory. As you can see, I'm back in my old filming setup. In my last video, I said that it's been raining nonstop and I can't be downstairs because the sump pump is very loud. I can still hear it even up here, but it's way quieter. But I had to move up all my filming equipment here so that I can film temporarily. Let me know how you feel about this setup versus the one in my basement with just a plain background. Or is this whole background too busy? Let me know. But today's video is gonna be a wear test on the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Foundation. I'll be showing you how it applies initially as well as checking in throughout the Day to show you how it wears. For anyone that's new here, I have both oily and acne prone skin, so my wear tests are catered towards people with similar skin types. And if you find that this review is helpful, I will link up here a playlist of all the other foundations that I have reviewed. And before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I try to post new videos every single week, and also be sure to follow me on my social media. Everything is underscore Ivory Cherry. So for anyone that is unfamiliar with the packaging, this is what it will look like. For me, I really don't like this packaging. I don't know why they wouldn't make the plastic see-through or at least frost so that I could hold it up to my neck and shade match in store. Hopefully your Ulta will let you swatch them, but to me the packaging, you're asking for people to get the wrong shade. I think packaging like this would have a lot of returns and then those bottles get thrown away because they've been opened. The only thing I do like about the packaging is how small it is. Come on, Willow. This is why I don't film upstairs. For one fluid ounce, I prefer the smaller packaging, the better. Like this foundation is also one fluid ounce, but you see how much smaller this one is. That's really the only thing I like about the packaging. Before I applied the foundation, I did go ahead and use primer. I used the L'Oreal Matte Lock Primer, as always. And then I squeezed what I would consider a normal amount of foundation to use on my glass plate. I started applying the foundation. About five seconds in, I realized that I wanted to put powder underneath and I forgot. I've done this before and I did it again. So I ended up having to remove the foundation, reprime half my face, and then applied loose setting powder underneath. Adding loose setting powder underneath foundation is a great way to help prolong oils for coming through. I've also noticed that it can help keep makeup together way better. So for certain areas where my foundation starts to break up and separate first, I like to apply loose setting powder there. The powder I'm using is the Derma Blend Loose Setting Powder. Hello. I am editing Ivory. Unfortunately, I have made the terrible error of filming the next part of my video without any audio. You would think that after doing this for over two years and having over a hundred videos, I'd know better, but that is not the case. This video, first of all, was filmed over a month ago, and also I don't have the foundation anymore. Otherwise, the easy solution for me would to be actually to redo this entire video, which I would have no problem doing, but like I said, I don't have the foundation anymore. I borrowed it from a friend. So to accommodate this situation and it's not going to be throughout the whole video I just want to say it's just for the next probably two three minutes is to have filming ivory I'm talking like I'm not the person you just saw like the, like me and that person there's a disconnect or something but I think the easiest solution is to just refilm this part like this and I will add snippets of the day I did the wear test over me talking right now but for the next couple minutes this is what we're working with and if this angle seems a little bit crooked by the way it's because you're standing on a box of tissues so like I was saying the powder that I was using is the derma blend loose setting powder this is my favorite powder to use under my foundation I'm not too picky about the powders on top of my foundation but under my foundation I'm a little bit more particular about and I applied that everywhere that I get the oiliest first so my forehead my t-zone on my nose and on my chin often I will add powder on my entire face but I really like to concentrate most of the powders in the center of my face and then just a really thin layer on the outside of my face so like everywhere test I like to put on the foundation with two different applicators the two that I always compare is a brush with a sponge since I feel like those are the two most common applicators for people on the brush side I use the BS small round kabuki this brush does come in a kit you can't get it individually but the kit actually is very affordable they're on Amazon and I will link them in my description box below because I always recommend this brush set for people that want good quality brushes at a great affordable price and then on the other side I went in with a Juno & Co microfiber sponge the shade that I'm using is J450 Casablanca according to the description it is a natural and soft matte finish and it is suitable for all skin types including sensitive and oily skin the foundation is supposed to have a velvet matte finish the bottle contains one fluid ounce and retails for $20. Okay, so I've checked both Juvia's Place and Ulta. From what I can see, they don't talk about what type of coverage this is, or maybe I'm overlooking it. I'm 
not really sure but i will say because the bottle is not a pump i added a pretty small amount i would say probably like a dime size and with that small pump i was able to get full coverage in one layer so that is my experience with the foundation but i feel like it might be similar for most people considering i have very uneven skin i have acne prone skin so there's a lot more for me to cover up but because the coverage was so great in one layer i i just kept it at one as far as applicator goes i mean i always feel like the sponge does give me a little bit more coverage and even if the coverage is the same i feel like i get more coverage with less product with a sponge that being said they are pretty neck and neck so i don't think you can go wrong with either or for me personally though i mean the sponge is kind of just what i've gotten used to at this point but reiterating once again i think you're gonna get full coverage with either applicator it's exactly what it says in the title it is a velvet matte finish you won't get any shine with this and i feel like this is definitely catered towards people with oily skin. I can't say that this is gonna be a bad foundation for combo or oily skin because I kinda don't have that, so I don't know. I'm just saying that for people with oily skin like myself, this is great. I'm literally looking through my footage trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. I feel like a Twitch streamer doing a play-by-play -play of the game that they're playing. So initially when my makeup is all done, I think everything looks really good. Finish and everything is exactly like advertised. I did notice that on my forehead wrinkle, the foundation had settled a little bit right there, which is pretty normal. I kind of learned to accept that, but it didn't look that bad. It was on par with the other foundations that I like. It didn't seem to settle anywhere else though, just the forehead wrinkle. Other than the settling in my forehead wrinkle, it looked good everywhere else. I have no complaints. So on a first impressions, I'd say that I was pretty impressed, but I think that was pretty much all that was said. So the next check-in that filming Ivory is going to do is going to be a natural lighting. I like to do that with all of my wear tests as of recently, just to give you a different perspective of how it may look. All right, we're all caught up now. So back to filming Ivory. All right, we are five hours in. I love the way this foundation is wearing. I still think I look pretty matte. It's more like a satin matte finish, whereas at the beginning it was a velvet velvet matte finish and everything looks immaculate. Everything on my nose is intact. On my chin area, nothing is separating or cracking. On my smile line, there's, I guess, like the tiniest crack right here. It's pretty faint, so I'm not mad at it. And as far as the forehead crack, it's still there. I don't think it's gotten any worse. Everywhere else, though, looks just amazing. It's working really well on me. So far, I really, I don't have any complaints. If anything, I feel like my makeup actually looks a little bit better. Now that my oils have mixed in, everything looks a little bit more skin-like. <coughs> Oh, no, no, no. Leave that dog alone. Leave it. I think that this is a sign that I should wrap it up. So I will see you at the 10 hour mark to show you how this is wearing and to give you my final thoughts. Okay, I'm wrapping up. See you in five hours. All right, it is 10 hours later and I love the way that this foundation looks. Even at this point, I don't feel like I'm overly shiny and I would be perfectly fine carrying on throughout my day and I wouldn't feel the need to blot. I mean, it's holding together so well. Everything has stayed in place. It hasn't budged. On my chin area, I do see just a little bit of wear and tear at the very end right here. It's like cracking a little bit, but it really doesn't look that bad. I wouldn't have noticed it unless I was like specifically looking for it. My T-zone area looks really good good this line at my forehead that i got earlier i feel like it's better now than it was initially like this foundation is just getting better as i wear it there's a really faint crack right here in my smile line considering i can barely see it and it's been 10 hours it's not a big deal to me. I'm gonna take some blotting sheets and blot only half my face so we can compare side by side. The blotting sheets that I use are from Amazon and I will link them in my description box below. I went ahead and blotted this half of my face. Don't mind my lips, by the way. I just removed some of the liquid lipstick. There's a little bit left, but I figured I'm gonna wash my face in about a half hour, so I'll get the rest of it off then. Seeing this side blotted, you can barely tell the difference. Like, this is just a little bit shinier. It's really not that big of a deal. I can't believe that after 10 hours, I can look this matte. The only other foundation that's really done this is the Urban Decay Stay Naked. That is also a really amazing foundation. On the side where I blotted, I did lose a little bit of coverage right here on my nose. It's not super noticeable it's more so like right here in the crack it's a little bit sheer i also think i lost a little bit of coverage right here in my t-zone as well as my chin these are pretty common areas where i tend to lose the most coverage when i blot just because those are the areas where i get the oiliest first so this isn't super surprising to me but despite the blotting sheet taking off some of the coverage it removes so little that it's barely noticeable and i would be fine with either of these sides so whether you want to leave it as is i think it looks awesome or you want to be super duper matte again you can touch it up and it still looks pretty good Good. You might lose a little bit of coverage here and there, but it's barely noticeable and it still looks really good. All right, so let's talk about the good and the bad with this foundation. So the things that I like about this foundation, the coverage is not only great, but it's great in one layer. $20 to me isn't really considered cheap and it is a little bit weird to me that Juvia's Place and Ulta is kind of, 
at least for me, it's placed near the affordable makeup. So from where they placed it, I would think that this would be a little bit more affordable, but considering it's priced higher than a lot of drugstore and affordable foundations that I've seen, I am a little bit harsher on it because I'm like, why is it priced higher? And the fact that I was able to get great coverage with very little product, one layer, and it lasted really well on me. It seemed to get better as time went on. And when I blotted, it did take off a little bit of coverage, but it still looks really good. That justifies $20 to me. The things I don't like about this foundation, it doesn't always apply to me, but it kind of does. You know, in the winter, I'm not always this oily. I do get dry days or drier days. There are days where my acne is healing and the skin around it is super flaky and crusty. I would think that a foundation like this wouldn't look good on the days where I'm a little bit drier just because it is so matte. And typically when I break out and my skin is really bad around my acne, I stay clear from finishes like this. So that is one drawback. I would probably be able to use this for spring and summer, but I don't know about fall and winter. Other than that, I really like this and I would recommend this to someone. Definitely cater towards people with oily skin. So if that is you and you're looking for something super matte, super long lasting, and you're gonna stay pretty matte for at least 10 hours, this is it. And even though 20 bucks is a little bit high, I think that's okay because you're gonna need very little product to get the coverage that you want. So if you want sheer coverage or medium coverage, you're gonna need like a needle point amount. <laughs> but that is it for this review. I hope that it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below what foundation I should try next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Oh my God, I'm so fucking hungry. My stomach hurts. <laughs> no. Oh God. You guys, stop. Both of you, leave the dog alone. Let him pee in peace. <laughs>